All right, if you can pardon my messy desk here, I had it clean earlier. <laughs> of course I did. Um, I was gonna make a tutorial for replacing um, the fluorescent backlight bulbs in a monitor like this. So this is a cold fluorescent, cold cathode fluorescent, CCFL bulb. It's got two on each side, or on each, the top and the bottom. And then they just project into the piece of glass that the LCD, the actual LCD liquid crystal display screen sits on top of, and then there's some diffusers in the middle. And it just, this one just has um, the two bulbs that run the entire length on the top and the bottom, and then they shine in, and then that diffuser and the glass and all that disperses that light out the front um, quite evenly. Um, and I just want to have some little tips here since I, I started recording the, the tutorial and I got all the way through and it was kind of jumbled and crazy and it was going to be like a two-part like 15 minute series but I ended up scrapping it because one it's not that hard to actually do the work as long as you're very careful and two I had a little issue <laughs> and it's totally my fault but I have it fixed and that's what I'm getting at now. So, um, to split these apart, you can see maybe there's like a there's like a tab of metal. So just like how on this one the LCD screen fits into the plastic front bezel, you know, like that. The similar a similar idea is used to hold all the parts of the actual panel together. So we've got this front bezel sort of um, metal piece that's only about this thick that goes all the way around and that holds in the actual liquid crystal display, membrane -y, whatever, the thin part that makes colors appear. And then behind that is all just the lighting. So um, you take off that front bezel on this model and then you have another plastic bezel that goes all the way around and uh, make sure I'm not zooming in like an idiot. Plastic bezel goes all around. I think I've probably been zooming in earlier. I wasn't watching the camera. Sorry. Um, so you take that off. Again, you're, you're, you have to flip the whole display over. You take the metal bezel off. Then you take the plastic bezel off. And while you're doing that, this is the... <sighs> I guess controller board for the actual panel. So we've got the power supply and then we've got the main board which is the one that talks to your computer and takes or whatever and takes all that video information and then it sends it to this board which is long and it has these ribbon cables really delicate they're like they're not like soldered on and there's probably a hundred pins all the way across this or maybe 200, who knows? <laughs> a lot, <laughs> a whole lot. And there's, you know, they split it up into a bunch of different cables and they're just like glued on basically. Um, if uh, anyone has an experience with uh, your old your old original Game Boy, the, uh, you'll, sometimes you'll start getting lines in the screen and stuff. And that's that like adhesive and stuff pulling lines off of the circuit board where they should be stuck down, you know. Anyway, you have to be super careful on all of those ribbon cable connections and everything because if you break one, you just wasted all your time and all your money if you bought new bulbs. Um, anyway, metal bezel, plastic bezel, which is under the actual LCD, which I would flip this over, but there's no point. The thing that you can thing that I'm touching right now that thing comes off it's like 30 second 30 seconds of an inch thick or maybe a 16th or something like that it's really thin take that off very carefully and put it in a very nice place where it's not gonna get all dusty and crazy or not get scratched you put it face down because the back side is all glossy and probably a lot more delicate than the front and then you've got like a couple layers of just like plastic like diffusers and then there's a sheet of glass. And there's a problem with the glass is it has one, sharp edges, and two, it's not finished 
well, because the edges are sharp and such, and they don't expect you to ever be getting into this panel as an end user, you will probably get little tiny shards of glass on your desk, <laughs> which you need to take care of. Don't use a rag that you're going to reuse. Uh, get maybe like a wet um, paper towel or something when you clean them up and make sure that you don't like scoop them on the floor. They're really, really microscopic and they probably are too weak and thin of little pieces of glass to actually do anything. But if you do get one in your finger or something or in your foot, if you're barefoot and on your floor or whatever, you're probably not going to be able to get it out just because it's so small and so thin and you just, I don't know. It, it was kind of a nightmare when, when I first came across that. Uh, it's like, oh no, oh no, there's glass all over the table. It's not that much glass, it was just like little, like if you spilled some salt, you know, like a little bit of glass in there. But, um, so there's that glass thing, and then on this model at least, there's these little metal brackets, and they're shaped kind of like this. And they go like that onto the piece of glass. So they have a long side and a short side, and those are what hold the bulbs. Um, and then on the ends of the bulbs, actually I've got the old bulbs here, here's one. On the ends we have this, uh, this is like a rubber, like, suspending grommet thing. This one's actually shattered. Whoops! Yeah, these are the old ones, so they're useless. Um, and then these wires go on the back side of the cage thing, you know, that I was talking about. So the cage goes around the bulbs, but then these wires go on the back of it, which is kind of complicated. So you have to cut... Since you're not going to use these bulbs anymore, I would just take, you know, wire clippers or whatever and cut these lines, because they're useless anyway. And then carefully take the bulbs out of the bracket. And then carefully put the new ones in there. And with the new ones, you won't have this heat shrink on the end. Um, so you can actually pull the wires through those rubber grommet things. So that they're slack. You know, they're like hanging out like this far from the bulb. And that'll allow you to put the uh, metal bracket in. Uh, or reflector, I guess is what it probably is. So much easier. Um, and then you can just, once once you got the, the two rubber ends firmly put into the metal thing, that thing, onto the glass, <laughs> that goes onto the glass, um, you can pull those lines tight. And here is what I'm getting at. Seven minutes and 45 minute, uh, seconds into the video, make sure that you firmly secure those lines so that they do not get pinched because I thought I could just tuck them in there carefully and I was being pretty careful trying not to do what I just did <laughs> and they will still get pinched and I had a pinch in one of these lines um, and so when I got the entire thing put all the way back together brand new bulbs all in it I go over here and I hit the button it's, you know, it's powering up, it's powering up, and then the backlight goes, flash off. Like, burp. And then like five seconds later, it tries again, it goes, burp. And what was happening was, one of these lines was shorted to the chassis, shorted to ground, and the power supply circuit and the inverter circuit were, was going like, oh crap, and shutting it off, and then trying again, and then going, oh crap, and then shutting it off, and trying again. So it was just like one of these wires, and these are high voltage wires. I don't know exactly how high of voltage they are on like a 22 inch monitor like this, but it's in like the hundreds of volts. It's not 20 volts, it's like 300 or like 200 or something like that. It's very high current, not high current, but high voltage. So it's very easy for them to arc to a chassis. And so these uh the um insulation on these are is it it feels kind of like silicone-y maybe that's what it's made out of I don't know it's it's definitely made for putting that many volts through this tiny little wire and you do not want that voltage to jump to the chassis because it'll just turn it off any anyway. oh crap my card ran out uh where was I 
wires, make sure you tape them down to the little metal brackets, the, the reflectors that hold the bulbs. On there. You know, the wires go on the back side, so make sure they're taped down nice and secure all the way along. What I did was I pulled them tight, the new bulb wires, and taped them perfectly on this end, which is where they come out. And so then I knew that it was a nice, like, tight um, tension all the way along, and then I, I taped this end. And then I did one in the middle, and then one in the middle of those. So I did five pieces of tape all the way across, and it was super secure and looked great. And it went together so much easier. Which brings me to my next point. If you're putting it together and something is just not fitting, if it feels kind of squishy and it's just not going in, especially when you're putting these bulbs, which again, are in the metal brackets, which kind of connect to the piece of glass, and then that whole assembly has to drop into this back metal frame. If that's not going in as easy as it came out, and once again, these are just tabs. They're just, they're just a million little metal tabs on each side. If it's not going in the same way it came out, you're probably pinching something, and that's what my mistake was at the time, I think. Is I thought it was gonna kinda wiggle its way through and just fix itself once I got it all in, you know, like, oh, this is a little tight, but it, once I get the other side in, it'll be fine. But, yeah, I ended up pinching a wire. It was this one on the end here, this little white one. Blue ones are the same, too, basically. Um, I even mark. And the way I found out which wire was screwed up is half of these wires do have some continuity to ground, so all the white ones, I think, did. And, I mean, I checked all the wires, all eight of them. There's two, four, six, eight. And I found that one of the white wires measured basically completely shorted to ground, or, or completely shorted to the chassis. So I knew that it was like 0 0.9, 0 0.9, 0 0.9. I think it was 900, 900 kilo ohms. So it showed up as 0 0.9 on there, and then the range got an auto range thing. I don't remember what it was exactly, but one of them was obviously just like the same as when you connect these two together, you know? So I knew that was the wire and that narrowed it down to which side. I was like, okay, well then it's this side. I don't care which one of these goes to which, but I'm sure I'll find the wire. So I found the wire, sure enough, right up here at the front on one of the white wires, which ended up being the one that I was, that I marked. It had this cut in it and it was like pinched and it was obvious that the that the wire on the inside was just showing out. So I taped it up with electrical tape. Hopefully that'll be fine. Um, I think it'll be enough insulation and put it all back together and the thing works. And I'm about to run out of memory cards, so have a good day.